awareness is always choiceless. In the process of transformation, your journey begins with mindfulness. You are mindful of everything that is happening around you and then the next step comes awareness. Awareness is the innermost core or the flowering of the, the being and when awareness flowers it becomes witnessing. In one way or the other everyone has emphasized on awareness. How does it work? When we write a sentence there is a subject, there is an object, a process that goes on between the subject and object. I am eating. I is the subject and something is happening. You can do this consciously or unconsciously. When there is awareness, then slowly and slowly it always begins with mindfulness. That is the first step. Then you become aware and finally it comes that you become a witness to all that is happening in and around you. A thought is coming to you, you know that something is beginning to come to you and it is the core of transformation. Many names have been given to awareness but truth is awareness, light is awareness and when truth begins to blossom through you, know that the consciousness is flowering. And as consciousness flowers, you become more and more aware. Consciousness is not a word to be confused about. That which is your very core is consciousness or we call it Chetna. Hindu scripture says, I am ever expanding consciousness that keeps on expanding. A child is born, goes through various stages, consciousness continues to grow. In the process of that growth, you become, many things happen. You have to undergo many processes, you have to do this and that and so. And when you begin to be aware of these, then finally you reach the state of witnessing. You can see thoughts floating into, in the inner sky, just like clouds floating. And you are neutral about it. You are not judging whether this thought is good or bad. Simply you are aware of it. And that state is that of choiceless awareness. Buddha emphasized on awareness and the moment you become aware of the thoughts floating on the inner sky, you will find the thoughts begin to disappear. We can say in simple terms it is like light. The place was dark, you do not know what it is going on, you are afraid of going into the darkness, dark room, you turn on the light. As you turn on the light, everything begins visible. And then slowly and slowly, thoughts begin to disappear. Thoughts appear, emotions, feelings appear only when there is lack of awareness. And there is no need for you to fight with the thoughts. Your awareness is more than enough to destroy them. And instead, it is better to say that thoughts do not destroy, they begin to disappear. You are neutral, you are not paying any attention. 
and if you begin to pay attention then problem begins for instance you are watching a movie on the screen thoughts appear like that on the television screen thoughts keeps on coming like seas you can continue to watch without any problem but if you happen to see a particular car a particular dog and you remember this dog belonged to you once or it resembles the dog that you had the screen will not move forward you will get stuck there and this will create problem and it goes on like a chain link but the moment you allow this to happen without any choice then these thoughts cannot disturb you and the process of the emptying of the mind continues the moment mind is empty there are no thoughts and you are not bothered about the thoughts that are going on in the mind the inside the inner being is ready and inside the temple that's where you can see the spirit of god exists in the form of silence so those three words you have to remember the relaxation thoughtlessness and silence and if these three words are no more words to you in the beginning these are words then later on this becomes your experience you talk about relaxation how to relax but in that process you forget when relaxation happens what is the state you do not feel your body you do not feel your mind everything becomes very light and thoughtlessness thoughts may be there but you are not bothered you are not worried then a kind of a silence descends and that silence will be a singing and dancing silence and the moment it becomes your experience then the process of transformation begins first there is a word let us take a simple word water we know about water we know its quality how it is made anatomy physiology construction the purity and everything but we haven't taken a sip of this water when you take a sip of this water only then the quench can be thirst uh, the thirst can be quenched and then it becomes your experience what does this water that was considered to be therapeutic is doing in your system in the same way the state of thoughtlessness the state of relaxation is an experience and there is a vast difference between the word and experience the word is meaningless lause says the moment anything is spoken it becomes false the word water and the word and actual water are two different things water cannot the word water cannot quench your thirst in the same way the word we have to move from the word to its experience and it is always happens that few people are born with awareness and those who are born with awareness they die at the moment they die full of awareness you are going to sleep with certain thoughts and when you wake up in the morning those thoughts will be the first thing that will come to your mind so if you have practice awareness throughout your life then at the moment when you are entering into the bodiless consciousness or bodilessness or death then there will be awareness 
and next life will be life of awareness. You will begin from that. If death was a conscious effort like you are going to sleep, you are consciously going to sleep, now you have finished the day's work, the pots are clean, there is the kitchen is clean, all the wares have been cleaned, the stove, the place is clean, then when you get up in the morning, you have no worries and everything is topsy-turvy, everything is spick and span and clean. So if you are going to sleep, before going to sleep, you are conscious of all that things that you are supposed to have done, you have done it, then when you wake up, you are waking up in a total consciousness in a different kind of an environment. Similar thing happens when death becomes conscious, the birth will become conscious because they are the two sides of the same coin. From one side is the birth and the other side is the death. This is why there is so much emphasis is on being awake and alert. The scriptural injunction says, wake up, get up and be awake. The two things goes together. Utisht Jagrat. Utisht means get up and wake up. You may lie down and you are trying to be awake. Then any moment you may fall into the gap of unconsciousness or sleep again. When you are aware through life's roads, then you will be aware in the final moments of death as well. A conscious death brings a conscious birth. Instead it is benediction to be born conscious and die as well. Now, if you are conscious, you can choose your next birth because you know that up to now you have continued the journey. There is still more journey to be done and you can choose your parents. A person who dies in full of awareness, he can choose his next birth, he can choose his parents, he can choose the time and birth of his time and place of his birth as well. And this is a great benediction. Why did I prefer Sufi Brijmohan Lala as my parents? Because of his spiritual growth and something that needed to be complete has to finish in this life. Then you need a particular kind of a womb, not an ordinary womb. Ordinarily, when people die, it does not take time for the soul to take birth again. But those who die in die full of awareness, it becomes difficult for them to find a new womb. It takes a while to get a new womb. And they have a choice. They can choose the parents. And awareness, therefore, is the greatest alchemy that one can have it. Just go on becoming more and more aware and you will find the change will begin to happen for the better in every possible dimension. It will be, bring great fulfillment. But when you are trying to be aware, you are not making any choice whether aware of the light or darkness. Whatsoever is, is accepted as it is and you are aware of light, darkness, good and bad, then whatsoever is necessary will stay there and the rest will disappear. And that is a state of choiceless awareness. There is no need just to be bothered about anything. Awareness is just like a heartbeat or your breathing. Even if you try not to be aware, it becomes impossible. Just as you cannot be 
whether you are aware of your breathing, whether you are aware of your heartbeat, it goes on. Breathing is an unconscious effort. But when you begin to breathe consciously, then the process of transformation begins. And by changing the breathing patterns, you can bring about the changes as well. So breath becomes a move, breath becomes a vehicle through which you can bring more awareness into you. And that's why we have various techniques of breathing. But the Master says, have said that do not bother. In pranayam, we focus on the different type of breathing. Buddha emphasized that you do not bother about how the breathing is going. Just become aware that the breathing is happening, the breath is coming in and going out. And in that very process, it slows down. And the moment breathing slows down, you find that you are becoming more and more relaxed. It is awareness is not a quality or characteristic. Instead, it is your whole being. When you become aware, there is no choice left to be otherwise. And it is very difficult once you are aware that you have to fall back into the dark hole. The sun has risen, the entire inner sky is full of light. You live by this inner light. You are the pulse of the cosmos. You are harmony, oneness and bliss. Your words, actions and gestures will manifest the inner light. That is the outcome of the awareness. There is so much beauty that love begins to overflow as compassion. These are all the outcome of awareness, but we have to begin our journey somewhere. And the journey has to begin with awareness. And when awareness begins to flower within, it becomes choiceless. And when awareness becomes choiceless, then bliss and compassion are born as the flowering, as the blossoming of the choiceless awareness. Compassion, bliss, joy, you just feel like happy for no reason. Look at the child. He has not won any laurels. He has not gained any degrees. He has not won any lottery. He has not bought any car or anything. Yet still he is happy. And the child can smile even looking at the terrorist also. But as a grown-up person you will not. But the difference between the child and a grown-up person is child is unconscious. Consciousness is not growing. Whereas the adult is a different. I have heard during the British time, the monk was going and there was curfew. So curfew has a condition that when the person, the police or the military or the guard, they ask you something, you have to immediately respond. And once they recognize the cause and your presence, they can leave you, otherwise they have the orders to shoot instantaneously. So this particular monk has taken a vow to be silent. So when they ask, who are you? He, because of his silence vow, he did not answer. They ask a second time, who are you? He did not answer. The third time, when they ask, he did not answer, and he was shot. So while he was dying, he said, why did not you answer? He said, in every form, God is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. When the death is approaching, it can come in any form, and I am aware of it. There was, I have seen the footsteps of death coming in, 
there was and I had taken the vow to speak then why did you speak now just to tell you there is no choice and you are simply aware whatsoever is happening something good is happening something bad is happening a relationship takes birth another relationship is abundant whatsoever is happening is happening for a reason i know it not why i forgot to keep the to check my carry on luggage you may say that you forget that but why did i forget there must be a reason behind it and that you come to know only afterwards but we start saying things or lamenting that you have a bad memory you cannot remember things no everything happens for a specific reason and when we start looking at something a deeper reason there is a power within that knows beyond our knowings we cannot know why this happened to us when we act and that is the point when we are choiceless in accepting all that is happening then you enter into a new realm i do not know why this happened why this particular thing begin to happen then you realize after some time that there was a reason shayad khiza se ho koi nayi surat bahar ki kuch masle hai isi mein hai mere parwardigar ki a man was visiting a place when the last time he visited it was a spring the trees were full of leaves flowers garden was full of beauty and fragrance but this time when he came the garden the flower has withered the leaves have fallen the the trees looking barren he begin to lament oh what had happened to you no more leaves no more flower no more beauty no more fragrance so the tree said you do not know the existence everything goes on in a cycle the spring the autumn the summer the winter they go on in a sequence and when autumn comes leaves fall it is in preparation for the next season winter is approaching how am i going to protect myself i can during the winter the trees are covered with the snow and when the trees are covered with the snow the nourishment will not be possible so as a result i drop my leaves so when the snow falls it just slips out of the tree and i continue to survive and then comes the season of spring new foliage begins to come and everything becomes once again like that so is life every moment things keep on happening our choiceless awareness says we accept what we do not have any animosity in any way normally it happens between the two people when there is acrimony or because of that disturbance this had to part their ways it becomes very difficult to accept that and we become antagonistic to one another no can i be antagonistic to the car that has taken me up to this destination and now i have to abandon this car and leave it i have to come out of that car and go on the next destination life continues the before i got into contact with this person i did not know then all of a sudden a relationship was born continued i was standing for long on the road side all of a sudden a vehicle came in the form of a person i ride that vehicle continued the journey for a while now the time has come i have to hop out of that vehicle 
But this vehicle, I am thankful that it had carried me to a distance. The, when you go to the airport, you go through a vehicle, but you do not worry about because you have to come out of that vehicle in order to continue that other journey. That vehicle was important. Now you have to take the another vehicle to go to reach to your terminal. Then you have to ride the plane, take off, they come out of that plane, take another flight and life continues. In all that we are thankful, I'm thankful to you that I spent some time, a precious time with you in your company. You had helped me to move forward. Then there is a purpose of being in meditation. It happened with Junnad, a Sufi master. He had a son. Son was sickly. Wife thought that he would be, he cannot live without his son. He loved his son so dearly. Then it happened one day the son got very sick and he died. When the son died, the people were there. He went and completed the funeral service. Came back, people were there. So I thought maybe because people are there, so nothing is happening to the net and he, is, he will break down the moment the people will go. People have gone, but nothing happened to Dunnath. So the wife asked, I thought you will break down. He said, for a moment I thought. Then I thought there was a time when I was all alone. Was I not happy that time? I was meditative. I was growing into awareness. And because of that, I was happy then. Then you came into my life. Another dimension was added to it. Happiness increased. And then the life from one, it became two. Then the son was born. Another dimension was added. I did not do anything. These are the gifts from the unknown. God gives you something and it is his right to take away from you. And But the only thing he accepts you he wants you to be aware that it is the gift, my gift to you, not that anything else. Without my permission, this cannot happen that the two people will come in contact with one another. If you understand this, it is the destiny, it is the godliness that has brought me with in the company of this person and it is his property. The children are born through you, not from you. In the same way, everything emerges from God. The relationship emerges from God. The unknown and unknowable source. The relationship emerged. There was a process. We lived some happy moments. We had some un unhappy moments. But it is the sum total of that when we look into it was a pleasant time. Now it is a time to get bit farewell to that vehicle. We do it with full of awareness. Then what happens there? You will not only grow into awareness, you will realize that there is no burden on you and tremendous joy. Whenever you meet the person, there will be no acrimony no disturbance and then you can grow into awareness. So the next birth that comes in, the next vehicle, it will be based on that understanding. The people abandon one relationship and go into other full of acrimony, then the process of disturbance and acrimony continues because they have not changed, they have not learned and you do not gain momentum but with understanding, with awareness that there is a power within that brought 
me in contact with that person and that the time has come to separate no disturbance then your journey will continue in a more harmonious way and that is a state of choiceless awareness it has nothing to do with positive thinking because positive thinking is not a technique that can transform you but choiceless awareness can transform you the positive thinking is something like there is something negative and you are suppressing it you are suppressing a particular aspect of your mind it is a method of choice it cannot help awareness and it goes against awareness so never focus on positive thinking although in the west there is so much emphasis on positive thinking awareness is always choiceless and the moment you understand that you can grow into you can move from a stage to a stage and that is the most important aspect that choiceless awareness is the essence of the growth of the process of transformation of human consciousness or whatsoever is happening in life if you have a choiceless awareness your life will begin express something which is beyond both positive and negative you cannot imagine an instant higher than both so you are not going to lose in any way it is not going to be negative it is not going to be positive either instead it is going to be existence if you want to attain to total freedom then do not have choice do not make any judgment that why this happened who was at fault no nobody was at fault it simply happened because it was to happen in that way and that is where the teaching of choiceless awareness comes in this is the reason why the masters instead just they try to tell you to be just aware and be not choose anything remember the moment you choose you have lost your total freedom and you are left with only one part but if you remain choiceless your freedom remains total so there is only one thing which is totally free and that is choiceless awareness everything else is limited and finite never choose never judge if you judge if you choose you will be in quagmire therefore just accept things as it is let let the life flow on a choiceless awareness is the goal that one need to attain it is the way to continue just remain aloof do not choose the moment you choose you have fallen into the trap of the world or into the trap of the mind if you start the choiceless awareness unconditional you enter into a different realm the realm of the beyond the realm that can take you to a state of infinite bliss